Hello everybody, it's Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Movie Studio Platinum. And here we are in part six of our eight-part basic training for Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. And in our last session, we looked at applying effects and then we looked a little bit at keyframing those effects. In other words, changing those effects or creating animations in which the effect varied its settings over a period of time based on little keyframes we added to the keyframe controller. Now that's one of the applications for keyframing, but keyframing framing is the single most powerful tool in the whole program and one definitely you want to get to know because keyframing can be used for instance to vary audio levels say for instance you've got music in the background and you've got narration that comes in occasionally how do you fade back the music when the narration comes in if you look at our timeline we actually use little keyframes with an audio envelope that's a little more advanced we cover it in the book and in a separate tutorial we use keyframes to lower the audio level of the music when the narration comes in and then to bring it back up again. So keyframes, very, very powerful. You can be used to create some great effects and to create some animations. At its most basic, keyframing can be used for creating a pan and zoom over a photo. And doing that is a great way to demonstrate how keyframing works and how to set it up. We've got a photo here. I'm just gonna drag it to my timeline. A nice picture of a boy and his dad and we want to create a motion path that begins with say a close-up of the dad's face and then pans back to show the whole photo to do that we're going to open not the effects for that event but we're going to open the pan and crop now pan and crop if you use it on an entire track has a different name it's called if i go over here to the hamburger menu on the left it's called track motion but it uses a similar interface we'll select pan and crop for the individual event and this is the pan and crop window. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the image by just using the roller on my mouse. And you notice that here in the pan crop tool, we have a dotted line, a box here representing the video frame with an F. You can kind of see the F in here drawn with dotted lines. That represents the frame of the video. I'm going to resize this a little bit so we can see what's going on in the preview window as we make these changes. So this represents the frame of the video. And if I set it over my picture, you can see in the video frame here on the right, we see the entire picture. As I resize this box by grabbing on its corner handles, I can zoom in to areas or zoom out. Now, it may seem a little counterintuitive at first that the smaller you make the box, the more you have a close up of the picture or the more the, the picture zooms in. But just think of that little frame there as what you will see in your preview window. And then you'll kind of understand how the pan crop keyframing works. So I'm going to reset this and I can reset this back over my picture simply by going up to the preset menu at the top and selecting default. That'll reset the frame on top of my picture. You'll notice that since my playhead was not at the beginning of the clip, when we started doing this demonstration, that it actually created a keyframe that keyframe represents all of that kind of like diddling around we just did. So I'm going to select the keyframe and delete it, move the playhead back to the very beginning. So we want to begin with a close up of the man, my dad, in this picture. And to do that, I'm just going to drag on the corner handles here and then drag on that little F box so that it shows the man's face. And if you look over in the preview window, that's what exactly what we have a close up of the man. And this position is going to be represented by that little diamond, that little keyframe at the beginning of the timeline. Now I'm going to move the playhead out. We'll move it out to the end. And then I'm going to create the final position for my pan and crop. By dragging this out, I can reposition it, or I can simply go up here to the drop down menu at the top and choose the default setting. And that will reposition that box right on top of my picture. Now between the two keyframes that are in the keyframe controller, the program is going to create the animation for me. And I could have any number of keyframes on this little timeline here representing the motion. But this is a very simple motion. Let me just play it. Going from start to finish. Keyframing is really key to getting to some of the deeper aspects of some of the tools in the program for creating animations, for creating very cool special effects, and creating effects that kind of vary their settings over the course of time. It's well worth getting to know. As I say, if you look for it, you'll find it just about everywhere in the program. I hope you'll come back for part seven of our eight-part series here. We're going to look at titles and adding titles to our movie. That's in part seven 
of basic training with Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. I'm Steve Grusetti, CM Part 7.